Welcome to Sun Valley. We are so glad you joined us again this week for Church at Home. My name is Ian. I'm Gina, and if this is your first time joining us, welcome to Sun Valley. We're super glad you're here. Uh, would you do us a favor and text the word new to the number on your screen? That number is 480-405-4145. And whether you're brand new or you've been around Sun Valley a long time, we wanna connect with you throughout the week. Whether you're looking for just a quick encouraging word or maybe even a laugh, make sure you're following us on all social media platforms. Yeah, and if you're watching service right now and it's live, we wanna encourage you to join us in the the chat, we have a team of people that are ready to connect with you and pray with you to talk about service, to talk about life. It is a great tool. It's a great way to connect with community right now. We're going to move into a time of worship and we're starting out with the Sun Valley original. Would you sing with us? No matter what you may face today, we choose to worship our God because of who he is, not just what he's done for us. Let's make it our anthem church. Come on. praises God is so worthy. He is doing a new thing and we are going to worship him together. Come on church, let's have some fun.
Yes, God. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that we cannot misstep if we follow you. Thank you for the perspective that you give us. God, you are unfailing. Your love conquers all. We thank you for everything. God, we love you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for worshiping with us. Uh, we love to celebrate the great things that God is doing in our lives. Maybe you've joined us since the beginning of the service. And if you are brand new, we wanna encourage you to text the word new to the number on your screen. Just uh, real quick, when you do that, we actually make a donation on your behalf to Midwest Food Bank. They are a ministry partner here in the area and they are helping to meet real needs of food insecurity in our community. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, and if you're new, we wanna invite you to download the Sun Valley app on there. Some great resources for you from past sermons to a place for you to take notes today uh, and a list of upcoming events, which include our care groups, which are gonna be starting at all of our campuses and online in just a few weeks. Here at Sun Valley, we often say that you are not meant to do life alone, especially during a time of hurt or hardship. And we have four groups we wanna to offer to you here coming up in the next few weeks. We have grief share, divorce care, abortion recovery, and abuse recovery. And you can find out more information or sign up at care.sb.cc. And CR remains a great option for all of us with the various hurts, habits, and hangups that we all have. You can find out more information about CR at the same website, care.sv.cc. Uh, from the team at Sun Valley, we wanna thank you so much for your continued generosity. Over the course of this season, we have been able to reach more people and care for more specific needs than we ever have before. Whether it's meeting tangible and physical needs of somebody, uh, caring for them emotionally, helping people get into counseling, uh, because of your generosity, we've been able to care for more people uh, than we ever have. So thank you so much. You can continue to give online or via check in the mail. We're now going to join Robert, our teaching pastor, as he continues in our series on hope. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Church Online. My name's Robert. I'm the teaching pastor here at Sun Valley. And before we dive into what we're gonna be talking about, I just wanna pause and I, I wanna say thanks to some individuals, in fact, a lot of individuals. So last week, we began regathering on our campuses for services for the first time since all this craziness went down. And going into that weekend, I was a little bit nervous. First, is anybody gonna show up? And then second, are we gonna have the leaders, the volunteers needed in order to care for the guests who show up? And I was able to go to a couple of our different campuses and, and see in the kids' areas and the student areas and guest services and in the parking lot, and I was just so overwhelmed with so many of you who stepped up to serve, not just to go to church, but to be the church. And so I just wanted right out of the gate to say thank you. Thank you for serving. Thank you for using the gifts God's given you for the sake of others. And all the people I talked to, they were just overflowing with joy and the joy of being able to serve other people. It's just part of how God has wired us. And I know some of you, you're watching online because you're not comfortable gathering yet, and that is okay. And a lot of you who have said, hey, I'm going to continue to be a part of the church online, that's great. And, and a lot of you have also stepped up to serve. A lot of you have been leading online small groups. And so I want to say thank you to you. Some of you, you delivered boxes throughout the summer so that people could experience summer camp for their kids at home. Many of you delivered food to people who couldn't get it or didn't feel safe going out, and you delivered food to those who had need. And this weekend, we're celebrating baptisms. And if you've been around Sun Valley for a while, typically we do baptisms in the room, and there's a pool, and, and we're dunking people, and it's a big party. This year, we're doing it a little bit different. 
And baptisms are in homes. They're in swimming pools. They're in lakes. They're in our state. They're also out of our state. And a lot of you have been delivering these kind of at-home kits for how to do at-home baptism. And so thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you who, again, you've given, you've served through these crazy times, and you've continued to be the church. I want to talk about baptism. So as services are going on this weekend and throughout the week, people are getting baptized. I know of many who are getting baptized in people's pools. And what they're doing is they are just celebrating their inward decision to say yes to following Jesus. Jesus teaches us to do that through baptism. And so I wanna encourage you, if you're like, hey, I didn't know we were doing that or I missed out on that, if you've said yes to Jesus and you've not yet been baptized, I wanna invite you to be baptized. And in fact, you can register by going to baptism.sv.cc and here's what that's gonna do. If you register at baptism.sv.cc, we're gonna get you one of these kits. In the next few days, and if you're like, hey, I'm not near a campus or whatever, we'll still find a way to get it to you, even if we have to mail it to you. And, and you'll get everything in this kit, including the limited edition New Life Sun Valley 2020 COVID t-shirt, okay? In the year of all the craziness, uh, normally our baptism shirts, it's a big water droplet. We came up with a new one just for you. And so we'll send that to you. And also, if you're like, hey, I wanna baptize somebody, we'll get you a shirt as well. And part of the kit We even have a little laminated what to say when you're baptizing somebody so you don't have to like, I don't know what to say if I'm gonna be the one baptizing somebody. We've got everything covered. We have videos walking you through how to do that and and we wanna celebrate that together. So that being said, we're asking that everybody who's baptizing, getting baptized, would you get your cell phone? Would you take pictures? And then would you hashtag it SV Baptism? And in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be celebrating that as a church, all the people who are getting baptized again in our state and across the country. And if you're like, what's a hashtag? Ask your kids and they will set you up with your own, like here's how to do it. Maybe they'll get you an Instagram account or whatever, but hashtag SV Baptism. And then we're gonna be celebrating that here in the next couple of weeks. Well, we're in a series on hope. And I don't know if you know this, but all of us could use a little bit of hope right now. And, and there's been, again, all this crazy season, and the Bible gives us so much to be hopeful for. And specifically, there's this prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. And in this prayer, there's the antidote to hopelessness. Throughout this prayer, there's these things that Jesus is teaching us. When you pray, because a lot of us, we just kind of pray like, God, I want this, or God, I need this. And, and Jesus says, there, there's more to prayer. It's relational. Let me, let me teach you how to pray. And so it's called the Lord's Prayer. Even if you've never been to church, you might be familiar with this prayer, but here it is. It's in Matthew chapter six. And this is Jesus talking. He says, this then is how you should pray. He says, pray pray like this. You don't have to pray these exact words, but this is a framework for us to pray. Our Father in heaven. And Chad talked about this last week. It's relational between us and our heavenly Father, the God of the universe who loves you, no matter who you are, what you've done, what's been done to you, It's relational, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, meaning God is holy. He is set apart. Your kingdom come, and this is what we're gonna be talking about today. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So in the heart of this prayer, Jesus says, I want you to pray this, your kingdom come. Now here's the the challenge with this, is you and I, we we have our little kingdoms. We we have our own little what matters to us and what's important to us and we're we're trying to build up our our little little tiny kingdoms. Then Jesus says, I want you to pray this, I want you to pray to God, God, your kingdom come. God's kingdom, the ways of God's kingdom, the culture of God's kingdom. God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so Jesus is teaching us to pray, God, it's not about my little kingdom, it's about your kingdom. And in heaven, the ways of heaven, the culture of heaven. And if you're like, what is the culture of heaven like? In this passage, it's Matthew chapter six, all around it, Matthew five, six, and seven is what's called the Sermon on the Mount. And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is teaching us about the culture of heaven, 
about how his kingdom operates. And, and so we are to pray, God, may the ways of heaven be lived out here on earth. As we are led by God's spirit through his church, we are to take this culture, his kingdom, the ways of heaven, and live it out here on the earth. But listen, it's about his name. It's about his kingdom. It's about his will, not ours. So in the heart of the prayer, we're, we're going, okay, God, your kingdom, your kingdom come. And in fact, you and I as followers of Jesus, if you've put your trust in Jesus, we are a part of that kingdom. We are citizens of heaven. And so we're to take those ways of heaven, live them out on earth, but here's where we tend to lose hope in God's kingdom. Here's where I've seen this happen, I've experienced this in my own life. We tend to lose hope in God's kingdom whenever you and I, we face suffering. When we experience suffering, we go, whoa, 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 I didn't know this was part of the deal. I'm trying to follow Jesus and I thought life was supposed to be good. And so when we run into suffering as we're trying to live out the ways of the kingdom, we tend to lose hope. And so if ever you felt hopeless in a time of suffering, listen, you are normal. But you and I need to understand there's this myth that as followers of Jesus, and if you have notes, you can follow along, you can fill in the blank, as followers of Jesus, this myth is that that means we won't ever suffer. I, I'm a follower of Jesus, so whenever I experience pain, I go, God, what's going on? I'm, I go to church, or I, you know, I give, I tithe, or I, I'm watching online, and I'm doing the daily devotionals, and, and whatever. I was even at the prayer gathering, you know, but why am I suffering? And in our culture, especially in the American church, we, we tend to teach, like, hey, if you follow Jesus, everything's going to be just fine. You're never going to have any problems, and a lot of us, we, we go, okay, I'm gonna follow Jesus so that I won't suffer. But listen, this is a myth. Jesus suffered. Followers of Jesus for thousands of years have suffered. Around the world, people are being killed for their faith in Jesus. Yet we go, but we're the exception, right? Like, that's not, that's not us. Like, we're not supposed to suffer like that. Yeah, maybe for some people, but but we're the exception, and maybe we feel like we're the exception. I'm gonna get real personal right now. This is, this is gonna ruin some things for some of you, but hang with me, and, and there's hope. Uh, for some of you, you have a tough time with suffering because you grew up, and at grandma's house, she had a pillow, and on that pillow was a verse, and the verse was Jeremiah 29, 11. And if you're like, what's that verse? I'm gonna explain it to you here in a second. Or maybe it was stitched in something hanging up on the wall, and here's what Jeremiah 29, 11 says. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God knows the plans he has for you and his plans are to prosper you. And you, you grew up at grandma's house and you, you, you maybe even slept on that pillow. And, and it could be you were like next level. It wasn't just the pillow. You had at grandma's house or maybe your own house, maybe this is at your house right now, you had the full blanket. And this blanket has that verse and you just, you wrap yourself up in that blanket and you sleep on that pillow and you go, okay, God's plans are for me to prosper. And, and that's, that's what you've been taught. That's what you've learned. And listen, that is a beautiful verse. And if, if you have this hanging up in your house, listen, I love you. Don't take it down. Keep it up. I'm gonna explain it. This verse might not mean exactly what you think it means, but anytime you have a Bible verse up in your house, that's a good thing, Okay. So, so don't feel like I'm picking on you. But this verse, I wanna give it to you in its context. So this verse, for I know the plans I have for you to prosper you for a hope and a future, it was written to a specific group of people. And the specific group of people, it's in Jeremiah 29, and, and that verse is like an excerpt of a letter that was written to Israelites who were in exile in Babylon. So King Nebuchadnezzar in 605, he goes into Jerusalem, invades Jerusalem, and there's another invasion into Israel. And, and between the two, basically, it's the, the whole land is destroyed and the people are taken captive out of their homeland and into Babylon. And the people were thinking, hey, God surely is gonna rescue us and bring us back to Israel. And, and, and so they were like, don't even unpack your bags. We're gonna be going home soon. And then this letter through God's prophet is written to the exiles in Babylon. And the letter begins basically saying, hey, just so you guys know, 
get comfortable in Babylon. That place that, that you're in exile, this foreign land, uh, get comfortable there. Go ahead and dig the deep cisterns. Go ahead and build your homes because it's gonna be 70 years before you return. 70 years. In other words, in this letter, Jeremiah 29, it's, hey, hey, just so you guys know, most of you are gonna die in exile. I mean, most of the people that are reading this letter, it's essentially saying, get comfortable because you're not coming back. Doesn't that just feel so warm and cuddly and cozy, but in this letter, it's, hey, just so you know, I want you to know, it's gonna be a long time, but listen, just because it's gonna seem like maybe God's silent doesn't mean God's absent. Just because this season of suffering is gonna be a long season, know that it is going to end eventually, maybe not for you, but for the generations to come. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. And that's where this verse comes from. So maybe you grew up thinking, well, we're not supposed to suffer. God's supposed to prosper us. Listen, this verse says God is with you even in the silence, even in the suffering. God's presence is with you. He sees you. He hears you. Listen, do not lose hope because God is with you. But just know you're going to suffer for a while. But for followers of Jesus, suffering always has an expiration date. And so for the people of Israel, that verse was to remind them that suffering would come to an end, but it would be a while. And so whenever you and I face suffering, we need to remember, listen, suffering is part of life. The world is not as it should be. But here's what happens. This is true for you. This is true for me. This is true for all of us. Whenever we face suffering, we don't just remain neutral. It doesn't just happen to us and it doesn't affect us either. We are gonna press in to God. We're going to lean into his promises. We're gonna cling to him or we're gonna push away. One of those two things are gonna happen. When you and I face suffering, we're either gonna press in, we're either gonna cling to God or we're gonna push him away. And the purpose of this letter, Jeremiah 29 The purpose of that letter was, hey, press in. Cling to God. Don't lose hope. Keep praying. Don't give up. And the principle of Jeremiah 29, 11, the reason why you can still keep that in your house or keep that blanket or pillow or whatever you got going on, it's true for us today, for those who are followers of Jesus. Listen to what Paul writes in Romans 8. Verse 28, he writes, and we know, that in all things, and if you're like, what, what does all things in the Greek mean? This was originally written in Greek. All things means all things. That includes good things. That includes bad things. That includes our own mistakes. That includes the mistakes of others. That includes the pain of this world. That includes suffering. That in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. In other words, God has a hope and a future for you. God has good for you ahead of you, that what is ahead of you, God is working even what is bad in this world, even what is wrong in this world. We have a hope and we have a future for those who love God who have been called according to his purpose. Suffering happens. This is a part of life. And God's plan, at some point in Revelation 21, it says God is going to put an end to all pain. There will come a time where there is no more suffering, but until then, we can trust God that God won't waste the pain. He will use it for our good. He'll use it for our good. He'll use it for the good of others. He'll use it for his glory. And he'll also use it to remind us that this is not our home. Just to be honest, I think one of the challenges we have in the church in America is there are times, there are seasons that things are really, really good. And we begin to get comfortable like this is our home, but the Bible teaches we are citizens of heaven, that heaven is our home. The earth is not as as it should be, and when we experience suffering, that pain reminds us that there is more, 
that things could be better, that God has so much more for us. And until that day comes that we go home to be with Jesus in heaven, we pray for the ways of our home to be lived out here. God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And what's ahead of us is far greater than what is now. Also in Romans 8, verse 18, Paul writes this, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And as Paul is writing this from prison after experiencing all kinds of sufferings, he says, listen, I'm not even gonna compare it to what's ahead of us because what's ahead of us is so good, which means suffering is just a season. Suffering always has an expiration date for those who are followers of Jesus, which means we can, we can keep our pillow, okay? Because this is true for us. Our suffering is temporary. Even if we're in a short season of suffering or a long season of suffering, there is hope. My cousin, his uh, father-in-law is fighting a brain tumor. And I was talking to him last week and he was telling me he's lost the ability to communicate because of effects of the tumor and, and all of that. And um, yet there's this one thing where when they play hymns, when they play Christian music, the part of his brain that, that remembers the songs, he can sing along. And in this season of suffering, he can sing the words of these hymns. These hymns of this hope that we have, that God has promised that even though we face suffering, he's gonna turn it for our good. He's gonna use it for our good, that there will be a day that he wipes every tear from our eyes, that there is no more suffering, there is no more death, there is no more pain. And in this stage, his father-in-law is able to sing those words, that truth, that's the hope that we have as followers of Jesus. Here's the, here's the truth, here's the reality. The myth is we won't suffer. The truth is life is hard. Maybe you're experiencing that right now. Maybe you, you just came out of a season of experiencing that. Maybe you're heading into a season, but life is hard. And at the same time, God is good. And there is hope. All of that is truth. Life is hard, but God is good. And there is hope. There's a family in our church who's been enduring a, a long season of suffering. Yet in the midst of it, they've chosen to press in, to cling to God and to have hope. I wanna share their story with you. This is the Cole story. Hi, we're Mike and Becky Cole, and we've been going to Sun Valley for five to seven years. My grandson, Wade, was a terrific kid. He, he had uh, just graduated uh, from Corona High School. He had a, a scholarship to uh, ASU, a full scholarship. He just loved life, and he just lived life large, and he, um, he was in everything. He was in rugby and choir and drama, and. Um, he, very, very talented young man, but he cared about everybody. Wade and his friends uh, decided that they wanted to do this hike, and it was Mount Humphreys, and it's the highest peak um, outside of Flagstaff. And they went up there, three of them, on uh, July 20th of 2016, and they got to the top, and the weather just changed. The clouds rolled in and, and they were almost to the top. They got to the top and, and there were something like 110 lightning strikes during an hour, about one o'clock in the afternoon. It was monsoon season and they were all three hit by lightning and my grandson was killed. Wade was dead. Another boy was paralyzed and the third boy was in good enough shape to help get the, the paralyzed one back down. Uh, I got a phone call from my my uh, daughter. So we went over and there were police cars all over, up and down her street. And I knew something really bad had happened. So I went in and uh, her husband, uh, Brad, Wade's stepfather, 
ran up to me and grabbed me and said, Wade was killed on Mount Humphreys today. And I just kind of lost it. And, and I just screamed, no, God, not Wade. I, I was just, I just couldn't believe it. I was just in shock and watching all the other family members um, react to it as well. Um, but personally, inside, I just kept saying, you know, Jesus, help us, you know, help us here. I was, I was mad at God. I said, you know, you just can't do this. You can't take Wade. And then it wasn't very long, maybe an hour or two later, I thought, man, God, I, I need you now more than ever. I didn't know where to turn, but I did know that I had a host of friends that would pray. And um, I immediately that night just texted a bunch of people, this is what happened, please pray for us. I wanted to really feel the comfort of Jesus. I really, really wanted to know that he um, loved me and that uh, he was going to hold me through this whole new experience, this new thing that I've never experienced before, um, losing somebody so suddenly so young. You know, grief is hard and, mm -hmm. and it, uh, it kind of takes on a life of its own. I was just going through the motions, but I was trying to, I was trying to stay busy till I could, you know, it was almost damage control. Just the, the friends, the people that were caring enough to listen to my story mm -hmm. and tell it about Wade over and over and over again, the first six months or a year, I mean, that's all I talked about. And, and they were patient and kind enough and they, and they listened. And they didn't try to say, I know how you feel. Our oldest granddaughter decided that she would make, she wanted to do something. And so she decided she would make a little wristband. Well, she made his name uh, a lot about his attributes. And so she did the W for wise and A for attitude and D for dedication, E for his energy. You know, when, when after Wade died, I realized how, how important each moment is. Yeah. You know, each day, each month, each year. As much as there is no answer to this, um, we know that uh, he touched a lot of lives and, and we're com I'm comforted by that. When there was a celebration of his life, we were like, so surprised of all the people that he touched and all the people that uh, came up and said, he came early to school and helped me study for a chemistry test or um, he helped me learn how to skateboard. It was just, just filled with people and stories, just way more influence than we realized. Mm -hmm. He loved Jesus, he loved his faith and he was telling all of his friends and he was trying to you know, make sure that they all knew Jesus. And it was just wonderful to see the ripple of how many people wanted to live life large like Wade did. The reality is, Wade, is home. And for us as followers of Jesus, this is not our home. Our home is in heaven with Jesus. And until we are home, we pray, may the ways of heaven, God, your kingdom, your will be done on earth just as it is in, in heaven. Jesus said, in this world, we will have trouble. In other words, life is hard. But then he said, but take heart. In other words, have hope. Jesus says, for I have overcome the world. That for some of us, this world is as close to hell as we will ever get. But for some of us, we haven't yet put our trust in Jesus, and this world is as close to heaven as we'll ever get. But Jesus invites us to put our trust in him, to find hope in him. Paul writes in Romans 8, verse 24, For in this hope we were saved. 
as he's talking about this hope we have in, in Jesus that, that our suffering doesn't compare to our future glory in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen as no hope at all. It says by the very nature of hope, it's in the future, it's beyond our sight. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. He says, be patient. What we put our hope in, our hope in Jesus is secure. Tomorrow is better than today for those who put their trust in Jesus. See, Jesus modeled this enduring suffering when he went to the cross. He experienced the suffering of not just crucifixion, but taking on your sin and my sin. And he endured that suffering and it looked like maybe God was silent, but God was never absent. See, sometimes when it seems like God is silent, he's actually doing his greatest work. As Jesus' body was placed in the tomb, for those next couple days, the disciples thought all hope was lost. Followers of Jesus thought there, there's no hope, but listen, God was doing his greatest work behind the scenes. Hope that couldn't yet be seen, but then on that third day, when they went to take care of the body of Jesus in the tomb, the stone had been rolled away, his body was gone, and he appeared to them resurrected, proving that he conquered death, that his suffering had an expiration date, that there was far greater in the future than the suffering that he had to endure for you and for me, and he offers through faith in him that you and I can have that same hope, that our suffering be temporary, that we would experience new life through faith in Jesus. As we baptize people all across the country this weekend, that's what we're celebrating. It's that new life. The old is gone. As that person is put under the water, the new has come. It's this new life in faith in Jesus. If you're watching right now and you've not put your trust in Jesus, your suffering is not temporary. Yet Jesus offers that that would just be temporary, just the pain of this life, that there would be new life in him. And so I wanna invite you to put your trust in Jesus. I wanna invite you, you can pray along with me right where you are. There's nothing magical about these words, but there is something about putting our trust and declaring to Jesus our faith in him. Would you pray with me? Jesus, I need help. I acknowledge this world is not as it should be. And I'm not as I should be. I need your grace and your forgiveness. Thank you for your death on the cross for my sin to pay that penalty. And the certain hope that we have through your resurrection that you promised to us as well that even though one day our bodies will die, we'll be raised to new life with new bodies with you forever in heaven, our true home. So Jesus, I say yes to your invitation to trust you and to follow you. Amen. If you said yes to Jesus, we just wanna send you a gift as well. And you can let us know by going to yes.sv.cc. And again, just by saying, hey, I said yes, we have a gift we wanna give you. We wanna walk alongside you in that journey. For all of us, there is hope. Even in times of suffering, there is hope. God has promised what is ahead of us is better than whatever suffering we're going through. And so I wanna pray with you. And if right now, some of you right now, you are in a season of suffering. It could be that suffering is physical, could be relational, could be emotional suffering. And you're struggling right now. Listen, even if it feels like God's silent, God sees you. He cares for you. He has a plan for you. He has a hope for you. He has a future for you. And listen, you are not alone. And so I wanna pray with you. And, and we have people all throughout our church who are praying for you as well. So I'm gonna ask where you are, if, if that's you and you're in a season of suffering and, and just a, a posture of receiving, maybe you'd be comfortable turning your palms up. And let's pray together. Father, we need you. God, this world is hard. Life is hard. 
And it could be some of us, we're, we're carrying this burden of suffering. It could be there's something going on with us. It could be there's something going on with somebody we love, somebody we care about. And God, it's hard to see the, the end in sight. And so Holy Spirit, would you come, would you fill us with your peace? Would you remind us that our hope is secure? And Father, would your kingdom come? Would your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Comfort us, be with us, hear our prayers. Even though we face suffering, God, you promised to see us through it. Would you walk alongside us? Would you see us through the suffering? And that whatever darkness we're facing, God, we trust that there is a dawn coming, a new day coming. And so we wait patiently. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen.
this weekend as we talked about hope, I know that there are many of us that are thinking about specific areas of our life that we would love to find freedom and breakthrough in. We wanna remind you that our care groups are kicking off in just a few weeks. You can find out more information about what groups we're offering, where they are, when they are at care.sv.cc. And we are looking forward to praying and worshiping with you this week at our midweek prayer and worship gathering, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. online at live.sv.cc. Have a great week.